84-year-old Yoko Daisley is a regular customer at the Camp Summer Exchange. But she doesn't buy much for herself. As her friend said, she is shopping for someone else again. Yoko lives near Camp Summer and comes to shop and visit her friends about once a week. It's like my life routine and passion. I enjoy chatting with the friends here. The man in the army uniform is her late husband, Master Sergeant William Daisley. Yoko and William met at Camp Summer when he was stationed there in 1959. Looking at photos taken 60 years ago, Yoko reflects on the early days with her husband. I remember I left Building 102 and crossed the street to go to G4. My co-worker, Sergeant Johnson, was with Bill and introduced him to me. So I said hello. That was the first time. Yoko was working at the civilian personal office as a typist when she met her future husband between the U.S. Army Japan and U.S. Army Garrison Japan headquarters building. Yoko says they began dating the next day. <laughs> Shortly after, Yoko's brother asked her to bring her new boyfriend to introduce him to her family. I told my brother my friend is American. He said, bring him anyway. So I did. It was such a big event in my family. We put tables together and prepared a lot of food. My brother was the only one who spoke English. So he became the interpreter. He drank a lot of beer and asked Bill many random questions. He even told me to shut up while he was talking to Bill. For Bill, it was his first time experience such a gathering in a Japanese home. Bill didn't take off his shoes at the door. So my sister was very surprised and told him to take them off. Yoko was born in Zama City in 1935 to a newspaper journalist and a stay-at-home mother. She has five brothers and a sister and is the youngest of her siblings. Right after graduating from high school, she applied for a job at Camp Sama. At an interview, they asked me, can you type? So I said yes and smiled. The couple got married at Camp Summer Chapel in July 1960. I can't believe we got married right here. That was when Yoko began learning traditional Japanese doll making. My Japanese friend who was our neighbor on SHA suggested me to make dolls. She said, why don't you learn how to make dolls just in case your husband dumps you? Then she continued, you know, you can sell your dolls to make money for a ticket to come back to Japan. Yoko, then only 25 years old, took a friend's cautionary advice and made a dozen dolls with the help of a few other Japanese wives. We PCSed out soon after, so I didn't have time to finish the last Oiran doll. I still keep the doll, but it hasn't been completed. Yoko and her husband left Japan in May 1963. Army band was out there to see us off at the port in Yokohama. Surprisingly, I was not sad and wasn't crying either. Bill's next duty station was at the Presidio of San Francisco in California, a national park and former army installation. It was there that he retired from the military and became a civilian. They lived in San Francisco until Bill passed away in 2002. The day Bill passed away, he said an angel is here to pick me up. Bill said to me, if I die someday, 
you should go back to Japan. I told him, no, I won't. I already had many good friends and neighbors, so I didn't want to leave. But in 2005, after living there for 43 years, Yoko made a decision to come back to Japan. My niece persuaded me to come back and live with her and her family. Yoko still keeps in touch with old friends who used to work with her in the same office in Camp Sama 60 years ago. I always want to be out there to help others. It keeps me busy, but I like it. Helping others is our life's work, Yoko says. But now they all say, why don't you take care of yourself more? Consider your health more. They keep telling me every time I see them. But I can't stop myself. Because that's something I've been doing for so long. After her regular weekly shopping trip, Yoko gets in her car and drives to see her friends and deliver the things she bought for them. Reporting for U.S. Army Garrison Japan, I'm Aya Watsuji.